Hi guys, so for our last two weeks of the quarter, we're going to start a project that has to do with internal structure or the golden section, the golden mean, the golden ratio. And in doing so, we're dealing with proportions. Okay? Proportions are another one of these attributes of form, like we talked about scale and you guys are working on doing something that plays with the scale of things. Proportions are also something that sculptors, potters think a lot about. And uh, proportion is like in math, a relationship between, in our case, sizes of things. So it could be the size of a handle in relationship to the spout or the body of, say, this teapot. Um, or it could be the relationship between the height and the width of the body of this teapot. So some people might look at this teapot and say, that's really beautiful and elegant. Other people might look at it and say, hmm, that handle looks a little bit big for the teapot. I wish it was a little bit smaller. If you're that kind of person who looks at the thing and decides whether or not you like the way it looks based on the sizes of things, then you're thinking about proportions. There are a couple of different kinds of proportions. Modular proportion is all about setting up a relationship within a portion of the larger piece. So in this case, we have this uh, sort of architectural sculpture, maybe it's the, a uh, um, model for a building, or maybe it's just something to look at. But you can see it has a number of rectangles and that those rectangles seem to be very similar from one part to another, even though the scale of those rectangles is different. So think of it like you're building something out of bricks, but you want the larger structure to have something to do with the height and the width of that brick. We also have racial proportion, and racial proportion has to do with the relationship between height and width without thinking about it as a building block. Um, so in this case, we have the front of a Greek temple. Um, and it looks like the Parthenon. And what we can see there is that the height and the width have these red lines and green lines drawn around them. And that the kinds of decisions about how tall or how wide to make the front of this basilica um, had some kind of mathematical relationship in mind when the architect was drawing it up. There are certain relationships that um, have been around for a long time that have some sort of um, magical um, combination of sizes that we find appealing as uh, viewers. Um, one is called the square root rectangle, and it's a tri or I'm sorry, it's a rectangle where the um, relationship between one corner and another corner has something to do with the square root of the height versus the width of the piece. So this corner, if I were to draw a, um, a diagonal line here, um, that would set up a relationship between the height and the width that would then give me uh, something that has to do with the square root, but also we get this proportion that's 1 to 1.414. The cool thing about the square root rectangle is that it's very handy in terms of uh, uh, saving materials. So if I was building something and I wanted to buy one sheet of plywood, let's say, and cut it in half, what I'd be left with would be the another square root rectangle and if i were to cut that in half i would get another square root rectangle and so on and so forth so there was very little waste in terms of that and people use that relationship often and therefore save materials and we see it all around us uh, in things like the sizes of doors and windows and all sorts of things that have to do with construction so it gives us this natural sense of like calm because we're very familiar with that shape of that rectangle Another one that we uh, see all the time is the golden mean. Um, and the golden mean is a relationship of 1 to 1 1.618. And it has been utilized since the time of the Greeks in all sorts of design. Um, interesting in terms of the 
the, the look of that um, relationship is that if we were to take the height of a golden ra ra ratio uh, rectangle and transfer that to the width and then cut that or divide the golden rectangle into a square and another rectangle, that rectangle that's left over is another golden rectangle. So it's sort of like the square root rectangle, but a little bit different. Then if we were to draw a arc from one corner to the next and continue to do that, you get this beautiful spiral. And we see this not just in um, uh, nature or in art, but also in nature in sunflower seeds and all sorts of spirals that we see in things like shells. But in addition to that, artists have used that to compose pictures or to design architecture or sculpture and so on and so forth. So here we see a golden rectangle with a focal point that seems to fall right within a division of that golden rectangle. So what do artists do? This is a, a, a famous sculpture of a monk, Ko Jen. And it seems pretty, you know, like standard, but then when you start to analyze it a little bit more, you realize that it itself has its own internal structure. He fits into a triangle, he fits into a square, the center of that square. He holds beads, which are his prayer beads, so that we're naturally drawn to the activity that he's participating in. Um, and that, in fact, um, gives it a sense of unity. Um, so I tell people, let's use this to design a pot or something. However, sometimes when we get to the math part, people get a little bit nervous about the 1 to 1 1.618 and so on and so forth. So I tell them, well, don't worry too much about the math. Use the Fibonacci sequence. And the Fibonacci sequence is a um, famous mathematical um, sequence where you add the first two numbers to get the next number. So one plus one equals two, one plus two equals three, two plus three equals five, and so on and so forth. So if you were to use those numbers to design a pot, which is your next assignment, you could say that I want the height of this to be 13, but at the bottom, I want it to be three. And at the belly, I want it to be five. And then at the lip, I want it to be eight. And just by using those numbers from the Fibonacci sequence, you start to approach the golden ratio. As the numbers go up, you will see that if you divide 34 by 21, you get closer and closer to that 1.618 number. However, you could do it with any number. You don't have to use the Fibonacci sequence to do so. So what I want you to do is on a piece of paper with a ruler, design a piece that has some relationship to the golden mean. I suppose if you want to use the um, square root ratio, um, you could do that as well. And you could do it as simply as we just talked about, where the height is 13 and the width is 8 at one point and 3 or 2 at another point, and then try to construct that. You can either do it on the potter's wheel, stacking it, or with coils. Um, but we want to have some plan, and we'll give you some paper, and then you can decide what you want to do in order to make your golden mean piece. So I'm going to stop sharing at this point and we'll hand out some materials and uh, you can get started.